All right, folks, coming on inside the 2022 Maverick, we got these awesome, what I like to call door shake door handles. So I'm like shaking the car's hand as a door handle. It's really cool. It makes it super convenient. It's very different from other vehicles, which I really like. And of course, it has a unique orange accent. And in fact, that orange accent runs through all the stitching in the seat and across the vents, going across the dashboard, even down here. And then you have little rubber cubby spots inside the vehicle that also carry on that orange accent. So really cool, unique designs. It's very niche for some folks, kind of quirky a little bit, but that's what makes this car so cool. Coming on across the dashboard from this angle, you've got those beautiful geometric shapes inside that white plasticky style of, of dashboard. Now, it is, it is definitely different than just having a, a flat plastic, right? So it's giving some dimension, some change to the vehicle. And I really like that, that cool design that adds something, some flair inside this, inside this XLT. And then moving on through, uh, you've got these cubby holes right here and right up here, there's sort of been some strange looking spots, but you'll see that you can DIY some phone holders inside those cubbies. So if you want your phone to project this way, you can certainly do so. And as I should mention, this system right here is on the Sync 3 system for Ford. And uh, you're gonna be able to have that Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which makes this car super fun because it does not come standard with navigation. I should mention that as well. Um, moving on over to the center stack, it is a touchscreen center stack. So you will be able to have that feeling of, of that multi-function screen there. You can scroll through different presets on the radio there and save them as you wish. So if I go ahead and just hit a random channel here, let's say uh, 94.5 The Buzz for Houston, I can just click and hold that button and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, it'll save that, save that feature right there. So you'll see it presetting there. And then you've got your phone. You can certainly add your phone via Bluetooth. That is still a function, but if you want that CarPlay Android Auto, you're gonna have to plug in. And there's two ports right here. You've got the USB-C, which is known as the, uh, the fast charging cable. And then you've got your USB 3.0 down here at the bottom. You can plug that cable in. It'll bring up your phone. Uh, and as you can see where they have this center stack scene, again, going back to what we said, like on the Expedition and all Ford vehicles as they're bringing it to the up position. So you're really just, just slightly taking your eyes away from the road temporarily to peripheral vision to look at that screen and what's going on via text messages or phone calls, but not allowing your whole entire head to look in the down position where, where previous vehicles had the screen down here. So you're completely taking all peripheral vision off of the road. So by us doing that, keeping you and your family members safe and, and coworkers, if you should be using this vehicle for business, allows you to just quickly glance over and you're back on the road. So you're not moving the head too much and taking it completely off the road uh, and then just becoming that uh, distracted driver there back into the screen itself. So you've got apps. Now those will come from your device. Um, and certain apps will be able to be downloaded to this screen. And then of course you got your settings. So we can mess with things like sound. We can look at your radio, FM, AM, uh, Bluetooth, if we have that. You've got your mobile apps as we just discussed, your Ford Pass Connect. So that's gonna allow you to stop, start, lock and unlock the car, remotely schedule starts. You can look at recalls. You can schedule maintenance all from that beautiful little app. You can look at your vehicle while you're flying in and you can go ahead and have that thing started up. Check all your tire pressures and your oil life and make sure you have fuel. So, uh, so you're ready to go when you land in that aircraft. Uh, moving on over, you've got your general settings. So you can change things like time to 24 hour time or 12 hour time, if that's what you're looking for over in the clock. But in general settings over here, you can change things like language. So we've got, uh, We've got English, and this is gonna be for all Ford vehicles as of right now, and we're hoping to get some more updates coming out. But we've got English, we've got uh, uh, Espanol right there, and then you've got uh, some French right there. So you can change the language, and it'll also change all the languages throughout the vehicle, whether it's it talking to you and or up here on the dashboard. So that's a really great feature. Uh, you can change units of temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius if you'd like to. Uh, you can control the touchscreen if, if, if it beeps and you don't want it to beep, you can certainly turn that feature off. Uh, you've got your software and reset. So this is where you'll master reset the vehicle if, uh, if you need to do such a thing. 
Um, scrolling on over, this one does have ambient lighting. Now this is not ambient lighting as before, where you used to be able to just change all the colors you'd like to. It's just gonna be the ice blue uh, for Ford, so we can turn that up to maximum. And then while our headlights are on, we're gonna get that nice ice blue accenting inside the cabin of the vehicle. Um, you can put it up on Wi-Fi and get set it up for automatic updates. So if there's any software updates to the vehicle, you can certainly get that going. Uh, Ford would like you guys to actually set that up on your home Wi-Fi. So while you're sleeping, the vehicle can go ahead and give you those updates and you can enjoy them when you get in the car at first thing in the morning while you have that cup of coffee, right? Um, as far as vehicle settings over here, we can look at your camera settings if we'd like to. So up in camera settings, uh, we can show the enhanced park aid. So if we don't want the guidelines there, we can turn those off and you can do a camera delay if you'd like to. 90% of us are not gonna do that. We want an instantaneous camera. So let's just go ahead and this, in this presentation, we're gonna leave that on. And then your door code. So here it's gonna ask you, um, it's gonna ask you if you'd like to change your door code. Of course, I just showed you guys outside on this Ford Maverick that you can change it. Uh, it's very easy. You are going to need the factory original door code to change this one in the system. So if you know that and you didn't you didn't quite uh, uh, like doing it outside, you can certainly do it right here on the infotainment system right here, super easy. And that's gonna be on all Ford vehicles in the vehicle settings tab. Uh, moving on down, you got your tactile buttons right here. So you've got your volume control, your tuner, so you've got your speaker button here if you wanna to get to sound settings and change those. So a lot of folks like to listen to their sounds and manipulate it and how, how their bass and their treble is. So you can quickly hit that button if you wanna mess with the EQs in the vehicle. You can hit the skip track so you can go back, you can go forward, you can hit pause or play. And then this button's really unique and cool. It actually will, it'll display the time if you want it to or it'll shut the display off and complete darkness so you've got that uh, super dark display there if you want to click that all the way off in case you just want it super dark inside um, and maybe you're light sensitive or something of that nature so turn that screen back on and then moving on down of course I'm sorry I skipped this part you've got your hazard button just up there so moving on down you've got your climate control set up so we've got the fan speed down here You've got the directionals, so you can put it on your face, your feet, or, or the windshield here. Uh, you can put it on max windshield if you'd like to, or set it up to those three stages of auto that Ford's putting in every one of our vehicles right now, which is an excellent feature for those folks that like to use auto. You've got a low setting, a medium setting, and a high setting. So uh, you can really click that button and it's not just full on, full blast. You can really set it to where it's comfortable for you and, and the folks inside the cab. You've got a max uh, AC button here and then recirculation. And then you've got your AC button on right now. We're set to low. So then you have your digital climate control on this side. So this will control cabin air temperature for every occupant inside the vehicle. Now, there's one thing I do want to mention as well. It's kind of a, a negative feature here. There is no air control for the rear passenger. So there's no vents back here on this center console. It is a compact car. But being that the cab is so short, it will cool down this vehicle actually quite quickly. But just note that there is no vents here on the back, uh, but there are vents on the floor. So if you put it on floor, it'll cool the rear passengers from the floor and then up. So in fact, this vehicle is actually just 11 inches shorter than our current Ranger. And it's four inches longer than the Honda Accord. So it's really, really, really a small compact truck but it's as long as a Honda Accord, a little bit longer by four inches, and I'm able to put a bed in the back. That is absolutely awesome. And I've got great four-door cabin space. So it's a, it's a fantastic fitting vehicle. In fact, I had a customer come in earlier today. He's 6'6". He can sit in this front seat without a problem. He doesn't even get close to touching this headroom. So you talk about head spatial awareness. This vehicle can cover any size person, put them in the front two seats, put the smaller ones in the back, and just go on that trip. All right, so if you guys got your Maverick and it's equipped with a wireless charge pad, you can go ahead and put your phone down in this small cubby space down here, and it'll wirelessly charge, and it'll show you on the infotainment system that it's currently charging. It'll be a battery with a lightning bolt in it, much like your phone will already have. Um, you can also set your phone up in the upright position to where it's visible if you get a glance text message and you look down at it. But like I said in the past, 
we like to keep you guys on the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, so you're getting that visibility up here, keeping you and your family safe or you and your colleagues safe while you're in this vehicle. Uh, moving on down, and, and there is some nice cubby space just behind that phone slot, I should mention, but moving on down, you've got the rotary dial gear selector, so you can easily just rotate the dial and get to drive. Great feature, uh, just like many in all of our Ford uh, rotary dial gear selectors. If I have this vehicle in drive right now and I turn it off and just show you a quick example of that, vehicle goes automatically to park. Same thing were to happen if I have the vehicle in drive and I have my seatbelt off and I open this driver door, I'll go ahead and demonstrate now, it'll go to park. There's safety features to keep you and everyone in the vehicle safe making sure the vehicle doesn't roll away from you. So then also on your selector dial here on the Maverick, you're gonna have a low gear should you need to be in low gear. Moving on down from the gear selector, we've got the parking brake. So we're gonna put our foot on the brake and pull it upwards towards us. It's gonna indicate over here on the dash that the brake is being applied. And then if we wanna remove the parking brake, we're gonna put our foot back on the brake and then push the parking brake to the down position and it will release those brakes. So moving on down from the parking brake, we have the drive modes. This is gonna be indicated by a race flag, snowflake, and a leaf. By clicking this button, you're gonna open the driver drive mode tab on your main center screen. And you'll click that button to enter it. You'll click it again to change the mode. So you have tow haul, you have slippery when wet, you have an eco mode, and you have a sports mode. So as of right now, we have five different drive modes to choose from on this XLT Maverick which is really great features because it's gonna change the dynamics of the way the vehicle drives per each mode, okay? Moving over to the left, we have a traction control button. If I click that button, it's gonna indicate up here on the dash that I'm taking the traction control off the vehicle. So given a scenario where I need to do that, I can go ahead and click that button and I'll take the traction control off. Um, over here to the uh, opposite corner, I've got the auto stop start. So as I'm at a traffic light or a stop sign, the vehicle will automatically shut down when it's in a stationary position. If you're not a fan of using that technology, uh, you can go ahead and click that to the off position, which we have done just now. And then a really great feature, which I absolutely love, is gonna be the auto hold button. So the auto hold button is gonna be a hand. Um, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna show me a hand on this dash. It'll be at a green, uh, green light and it will hold the brake for me. So if, if I come to a stoplight or a stop sign and I put my foot on the brake and I'm depressing that pedal, I can hold it there for three to five seconds and then this hand will indicate in green, meaning that it's got me covered. It's gonna hold the brakes for me. It's gonna hold the car from moving, although I'm in drive position. So it's a really great bumper to bumper uh, tool. It's a really great drive through tool. And if you're at the school picking up the kiddos uh, and anywhere in this Houston traffic, you can find a way to use it uh, because let's face it, there's a lot of bumper to bumper traffic from time to time. Uh, so that's a great feature. I absolutely love it. I think a lot of folks will too. All right, folks. So now on over to the Maverick steering wheel controls. So right off the bat, we're gonna go ahead and show that we have a menu button, an okay button, the up and down for that. We've got a backspace button in case we need to go to the previous page. We've got a skip track or hang up, and then we've got a answer or skip track going backwards. You've got, we've got a voice activation button that you can activate once your phone is connected uh, via Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. On the left-hand side, we've got a mute button, volume up, volume down, and our cruise control button here, as well as cancel, set is gonna be up, and then minus for mile an hour, increase for mile an hour, and resume, should we need to resume our cruise control. Moving on into the instrument cluster here, you've got your tachometer, which is an analog. We've got a beautiful, uh, digital screen back there showing our mile an hour. And then you've got a analog mile an hour as well as park reverse neutral drive at the bottom. You've got your coolant temperatures to the left of that and above it. And then you've got your fuel gauge to the right of that and above it. So moving on into this infotainment system for the cluster, we're gonna go ahead and hit menu. So I've got the option here to do a digital uh, speedometer. 
I can do a fuel economy mode or I can do a calm mode. Um, those modes are really actually quite easy. So you're seeing this is calm mode, which isn't really displaying anything. You've got your economy mode, which is showing how many miles per gallon you are receiving as of currently. Going on, hitting the menu button again, and I'm gonna put it back to this digital speedometer mode because a lot of folks like to have the ability just to see the digital speed. It makes it at a moment's notice glance, you know how fast you're going. Clicking down, you see that we have the driver's assistance tab. So this vehicle is equipped with Ford Copilot 360. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the menu, which is gonna open up that driver's assistance tab. And as you can see, we have our blind spot monitoring, which is indicated on both mirrors. And again, it's not an audible sound. It's a flashing of a yellow light to show you that someone is in the blind spot of your vehicle. So not to merge over. We've got pre-collision assist with active braking. So if in the event that you don't brake, um, and you're approaching a vehicle way too closely, the vehicle will break for you. Now, that is not something I recommend you try. Uh, I definitely recommend you breaking the vehicle for yourself, but in the event that that happens, this vehicle will attempt to avoid that accident at all costs. Going on back, uh, you've got a lane keeping system. So over here on this uh, blinker side, at the very end of this toggle, there is a button for you to enable or disable that lane keeping now that system right there and clicking in it we're on alert mode and you can change that from alert to aid or alert and aid now on alert it's going to vibrate that steering wheel letting you know that you've left your lane accidentally on aid it's going to pull you back in ever so slightly and it's that two pound steering wheel pull and then on alert and aid it'll vibrate and or and pull you back in excuse me it'll pull you back into your lane uh, if you're not a fan of that, it's actually really quite easy. You can leave this driver's assistance set to normal and you can leave it to alert or alert Nate if you'd like to. You can just simply click that button on and you'll see it's displaying right here at the bottom near the set or you can turn it off. So you never have to really go back into these settings. So when you're occasionally when you really would like to use that technology or if you have somebody else driving the vehicle and you want that technology enabled, just a quick tap of that button will turn that on. So then you have that driver alert mode. So that's that's an uh, indication that you've left your lane too many times and that you probably need to stop and grab yourself a coffee or maybe you just need to take a rest in general because you're leading your lane too many times and the vehicle is just kind of letting you know that uh, you're not really paying too much attention to the road. So I really do like that feature, it's a cool display. Moving on down, we have cross traffic alert. So in this Copilot 360 that Ford's offered in this vehicle, as we're backing out uh, of a parking spot, if a person, pedestrian, um, a motorcyclist, bicyclist, truck is coming across our lane and we don't see them, it'll automatically apply that emergency brake to avoid any incidents or accidents. Uh, of course, this vehicle is equipped with trailer sway bar control. And, and that's simply put, we have a trailer connection on the back. So as we're putting stuff on there, we wanna make sure that our trailer doesn't sway back and forth. So Ford has integrated trailer bar sway control on this one. So it's really gonna help us out when we're trailering uh, off the end of this vehicle. Rear park aid assist. So if you're not a fan of that beep, 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 as you're backing up, you can go ahead and find that option right here and click the, click the okay button to uncheck it should you not like to hear that feature. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on. Coming on down, we can look at what type of music we have. Uh, this is a very simple display, so it's not really gonna give us all the, the different drive modes where it's changing all the colors and changing changing all the, the design of the instrument cluster, which I think that's what Ford was after on this vehicle. So I think if, if that's what they were looking for, they really hit it on the head here. You've got your phone, it's showing that it's not connected. And also we've got settings right here. So if we click into the settings, excuse me, we can look at information on the vehicle. So tire pressures, right? So I'm showing that uh, the front left here and it's probably because I'm sitting here. I'm at 34 PSI. All right, folks, so moving on up from, uh, from tire pressure, we have the My Key setting. Now this one's gonna be for information. And later in this video, I'm gonna show you where the tab is and we're going to show you exactly how to set up a my key which is it's an administration setup to where we can reduce the amount of mile an hour the sound and the chiming on the seatbelt 
for those drivers that you want to have to where they're not driving your vehicle at such a rapid rate. Moving on up, you've got the auto stop start. As we shown earlier, we have the button for that. You can also click it in here if you'd like to. Right now it's under normal operation. Moving on up from that piece, we have the seat belt so we can show who's all buckled in inside this Ford Maverick. That's a really awesome feature if you can't see who's behind you while you're driving the vehicle. Just like F-150, just like Expedition, inside this compact truck, we have trailer light check status. So it's gonna check all the trailer lights and make sure all of them are functioning properly and notify you if one is not. Then you've got your oil life status as well. So you can click on that one and it'll probably tell us in this brand new vehicle that we're at 100%. Going out of this menu back to information, we can look at the display, so we can show different types of language if we want to change those, different units of measure if we would like to change those from like mile per hour to kilometers per hour. We've got different types of temperature units we can change from Fahrenheit to Celsius. We can change our tire pressure from PSI to KPA or bar. We've already covered the driver's assistance. Now we're going to move on down to vehicle settings. So this is going to be for lighting, locking, windshield wipers, uh, remote start durations. I I personally don't change anything in this settings except for wipers. If you have a courtesy wipe, which this vehicle is showing to have, so I'll go ahead and select that button. But everything that's coming from Ford Factory is already pre-set up really nicely. So I like the way it's set up, but if there's something that you want to change, this is the menu to do it. All right, folks, we're going to set up a my key. And so what that is, it's an administered key that I'm setting presets to that I would like the vehicle to operate under those conditions. What I mean by that is I want the vehicle to go to a maximum of 55 miles an hour. I want the vehicle to have a maximum volume of only 10. I want the vehicle to chime every single time that seatbelt is not plugged in while the vehicle's in motion and I can do it right here. Under this my key option all I'm going to simply do is click OK. I'm going to click create a key and it's going to ask me to click and hold the OK button. So we're going to do it in this click and hold the button. So it's saying creation complete. And it's going to say this key has restrictions. So I'm going to go ahead and say max speed, for example, I'm going to click 80 miles an hour. I'm going to go ahead and bump that down. Oops, excuse me. I'm going to bump that down. And this vehicle is saying I can reduce it all the way down to 65 miles an hour. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to reduce that. I'm going to turn on 911 assistance so I'm gonna say always I've got my child in here I want to know that they're gonna be safe and then I've got a speed minder so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on and I'm gonna say 55 miles an hour for example the volume limiter it's already pre-selected in this vehicle in some of the other four vehicles you can actually select the actual volume so in this one it's probably gonna reduce it to about 50% and then I can clear my keys. So in this case, because this is a brand new vehicle, I'm just gonna go ahead and clear my keys. I don't wanna actually set someone's vehicle they haven't purchased uh, to a my key setting. That would probably be very frustrating for some folks, but that's how you do it. And if you did wanna clear that code as that young person becomes an adult or as that person that you wanna give them the key, if you wanted to go back and clear it, you can certainly do it. It's a very easy process. That my key is a great feature for, for folks getting their, their kids into brand new cars and they wanna keep them safe with all the safety technology that comes from Ford with the Ford Copilot 360, with the Ford Copilot uh, 360 Plus Assist. Those are awesome cars. Ford has awesome cars to keep you and your family safe. So definitely go ahead and look into my key and set one up if you buy your family, uh, family member a car and you can keep them safe inside the vehicle. All right, folks, now that you've had a good look at the all new 2022 Ford Maverick, you can see that it is the most versatile compact truck in America. Built with Ford Tough and its rigorous testing, reach out to our sales team or myself, Nathan Wood, and get that great Mack Hike feeling.